Ever felt overwhelmed by the clutter in your life, both physical and mental? We all experience this to some degree. Clutter can appear in many forms, from that mountain of unwashed dishes in your sink to the ever-growing pile of unanswered emails in your inbox. This physical clutter can often be a mirror, reflecting the mental clutter that's causing stress, anxiety, and other negative emotions. But why is it important to address this clutter? Well, it's simple. Decluttering your physical environment can have a profound impact on your mental well-being. It can help you feel more relaxed, focused, and in control. It can reduce stress and anxiety, and even improve your sleep. Similarly, decluttering your mind can help you think more clearly, make better decisions, and be more productive. It can free up mental space for creativity and positivity. Indeed, decluttering is not just about tidying up your space, it's about clearing your mind as well. So, what does decluttering entail? you may wonder. At its core, decluttering is all about simplifying your environment by eliminating the unnecessary and thoughtfully organizing what remains. It's a process of reassessment where you take a hard look at the items in your space and decide what truly serves a purpose or brings you joy. Imagine your space as a canvas. Each object within it is like a brush stroke on that canvas. When there are too many strokes, too many colors, the result can be chaotic and overwhelming. Decluttering is like editing that painting, removing the extraneous lines and colors to create a clearer, more pleasing image. The first principle of decluttering is to remove excess. This involves discarding, donating, or selling items that are no longer useful or meaningful to you. It's about letting go of the old to make room for the new or simply to enjoy more open space. The second principle is organization. Once you've pared down your belongings, it's time to arrange what's left in a way that makes sense to you. This might mean grouping similar items together, storing things where they're most often used, or implementing a system that makes it easy to find what you need when you need it. But decluttering is more than just a physical process. It's also an emotional and mental one. As you clear your physical space, you may find that your mind becomes clearer as well. This can lead to improved focus and productivity. When you're not distracted by clutter, you can direct your energy towards more important tasks and goals. And let's not forget about the stress relief that comes with decluttering. A cluttered space can lead to a cluttered mind, and by clearing away the physical chaos, you're also helping to alleviate mental stress. So. Why not give it a try? Start small if you need to. Tackle one drawer, one shelf, one room at a time. As you progress, you may just find that the benefits of decluttering spill over into other areas of your life. Remember, a clean space equals a clear mind. Ready to embark on your decluttering journey? Here's how to start. Decluttering is not about merely tidying up, but about making intentional choices about what to keep and what to part ways with. It's like curating your personal museum of stuff. The first step is to sort your items into categories. You might start with broad categories like clothing, books, or kitchenware. As you sort, you might find subcategories naturally emerging. For instance, clothing could be divided into seasonal wear, daily wear, and special occasion outfits. Once you've sorted everything, it's time to scrutinize each item. Hold it in your hands and ask yourself, does this serve a purpose? Does it bring me joy? Is it worth the space it occupies in my life? This might seem a bit daunting, especially when dealing with sentimental items. But remember, you're not discarding memories, just objects. If you're unsure about an item, try the box method. Put it in a box, and if you don't reach for it in the next six months, it's probably safe to let it go. Don't feel pressured to make all the decisions in one go. This is not a sprint, but a marathon. Once you've decided what to keep, the next step is to organize effectively. A home for every item and every item in its home, as the saying goes. Use storage solutions that make sense for you. Baskets, boxes, and shelves can all be helpful, but only if they serve your needs. Remember, the goal is not to fit everything into neat boxes, but to create a space that feels good to you. And finally, please remember to be kind to yourself. 
Decluttering can be an emotional process. It's okay to take it slow. It's okay to feel overwhelmed. But with each item you let go, you're making space for new possibilities. Take one step at a time and you'll surely make progress. But decluttering isn't just about your physical space. It's also about your mind. Let's take a moment to explore the concept of mindfulness. It's a term you've probably heard before, but what does it really mean? Mindfulness is about being fully present, engaged in the world around you, and not overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's happening. It's about observing your thoughts and feelings without judgment, simply accepting them for what they are. Imagine you're standing by a river and leaves are floating by. Instead of trying to catch the leaves, you simply notice each one as it passes. That's mindfulness. It's recognizing the leaves as thoughts and emotions and just letting them flow by. The benefits of mindfulness are profound. It can reduce stress, increase focus, and improve mental clarity. It's like decluttering your mind, making space for peace and productivity. Mindfulness is the key to a peaceful and focused mind. Curious about how to achieve mindfulness? Here are some tips. Achieving mindfulness doesn't have to be a daunting task. It's all about embracing the present moment and experiencing it fully without judgment. Let's break it down into some practical steps. First, deep breathing. This isn't just any type of breathing. It involves taking slow, controlled breaths in through your nose, holding it for a moment, and then releasing it through your mouth. By focusing your attention on your breath, you anchor your mind in the present moment, easing stress and promoting a sense of calm. Next, we have meditation. This doesn't mean you need to sit in a cross-legged position for hours on end. Even just 10 minutes a day can make a difference. The goal here is to quiet your mind and reduce the chatter of your thoughts. There are numerous meditation techniques such as focusing on your breath, repeating a mantra or visualizing a peaceful scene. Choose a technique that resonates with you and practice it regularly. And then there is mindful eating. This is about focusing on the food you consume and truly savoring each bite. Pay attention to the taste, texture and aroma of your food. Notice the colors and the sounds it makes as you chew. This not only enhances your enjoyment of food, but also helps you to eat more slowly and mindfully, which can aid in digestion and weight management. Finally, Remember to incorporate these practices into your daily routine. It's not about perfection, but consistency. It might be challenging at first, but with time, you'll find that these techniques become second nature. And remember, mindfulness is a journey, not a destination. So be patient with yourself, celebrate your progress, and keep exploring what works best for you. Incorporating mindfulness into your life can be a game changer. It helps you to live more intentionally, respond rather than react to stressful situations, and enjoy the simple pleasures of life with a renewed sense of appreciation. So why not give it a try? So, let's recap what we've discussed today. We started our journey by understanding the significance of clutter and the impact it can have on our lives. We learned that clutter isn't just physical stuff crowding our space, it can be digital, emotional or mental too. It's the excess baggage that weighs us down and hampers our growth. Then, we delved into the basics of decluttering. We discovered that decluttering isn't about getting rid of everything we own. Instead, it's about making conscious choices about what we allow in our lives. It's about giving ourselves the freedom to breathe and grow by letting go of what no longer serves us. We also discussed some practical steps to declutter your space. We learned that decluttering is a process that requires patience and commitment. We talked about starting small, perhaps with a single drawer or a desktop, and gradually expanding to other areas. We emphasized the importance of categorizing items, finding a place for everything, and maintaining the decluttered space. Next, we ventured into the realm of mindfulness. We learned that mindfulness is the art of living in the present moment. It's about observing our thoughts and feelings without judgment. It's about accepting ourselves as we are and embracing life as it unfolds. 
we also shared some practical steps to achieve mindfulness. We discussed the importance of daily meditation, mindful eating, and mindful breathing. We talked about the power of gratitude and the beauty of disconnecting from digital devices to connect with ourselves. In essence, decluttering and mindfulness are intertwined. As we declutter our spaces, we create room for mindfulness. As we cultivate mindfulness, we make conscious choices about what we allow in our lives. So, embark on this journey of decluttering and mindfulness. Take small steps, be patient, be kind to yourself. Remember, it's not about perfection, it's about progress. Remember, a decluttered space and a mindful mind are the keys to a happier and healthier life.